Hmm, six-hour documentary about the horrors of late-stage capitalism or jaunty workplace comedy? Paul Burnford, who has just been replaced by a robotic arm. The Factory, How Pollution is Made. <coughs> In factories, people work together at machines to make many of the products that help us live better and easier. Fitter, happier, more productive. The products made in a factory take a great deal of planning, preparation, and work on the part of many people. Happy, well-compensated people who mostly don't even have black lung. Let's visit a typical factory. Mattel Toys Cool! In this toy factory, millions of toys are made. Toys like these honey bears. Neither functional nor recognizable. Ask for them by name. Musical clocks. Ah, uh, yes, that other classic toy. Toy guitars. You can pretend you're Amy Mann or Freedy Johnston. And merry-go-rounds. And the rest. But now, let's see how this factory plans for and produces a new product. Let's see how a factory works. First, create an impassable gap between the ruling and working classes. This is the factory's planning board. These men plan or decide what the factory shall make. I don't know, toys? At today's meeting, a number of ideas are presented. One man suggests that the company manufacture a jack-in-the-box, and he draws a rough sketch to show what it might look like. So like a jack-in-the-box kind of thing with uh, jack-in-the-box elements here? Then the idea is improved upon. Why not make a jack-in-the-box with music? A kind of jack-in-the-music box. Right, like every jack-in-the-box. Sketches of this idea are sent to the experimental department. You don't want to know what kind of shit those guys are up to. A worker in this department makes a sample or experimental model of the new toy. This is what the jack-in-the-music box will probably look like if it is finally manufactured. You call that an experiment? Come on, put some exhaust ports or gas burners on that thing. Mortality springs up from nowhere and mocks you. The model is now taken to the art department. Here, an artist makes rough sketches of pictures that may be used to decorate the outside of the Jack in the Music box. Kids love clowns, right? Should we ask them? Nah, pretty sure kids love clowns. Then he takes his sketches and the decorated box back to another meeting of the planning board. The men on the planning board check the completed model. Here it comes. Oh, <laughs> gets me every time. They look over the sketches, deciding which ones they want to appear on the new toy. But Doctor, I am Jack in the Music Box. The Jack in the Music Box is finally approved for production. Why so serious? Now the parts have been made, and the workers are ready to assemble or put together the Jack in the Music Box. Looks fun. <laughs> this is the assembly line. Each worker here does one special job, adding her part to the toy as it passes along the line. You had one job, Peggy. Right back at you, Phyllis. Let's start at the beginning of the assembly line and follow the process through. Oh, that's okay. This really? is the first assembly operation. Nicknamed the Finger Eater. This woman is using a machine which bends the flat metal sheets into the can body that will be used for the Jack in the Music Box. They don't even let her listen to podcasts. The cans move down to the next worker on the line. Empty shell meet empty shell. This worker joins or rivets in the parts that make the music. Which sounds like fun, but check this out. Jack in the Boxes really gave Pop Goes the Weasel a second life long after it left the charts. This is what they look like in place. Kind of a letdown, really. This girl puts on the crank and the rubber belt that make the music parts work. But enough about her nightlife. Then she checks the music making part of the toy. The endless, broken melody haunts her sleepless nights.
pop goes the weasel. Yeah. Another worker places a cardboard tube containing the clown's suit inside the can. She tells people she works in fashion. And still another worker operates a machine that puts the top and bottom on the can body, curling the edges so the toy will be safe to play with. Physically, if not existentially safe. She seals the demons inside to keep them fresh. Now the clown's head is made ready for the new toy. Each one is assessed psychologically. A worker glues a hat on the head. Mm, that hat is one affectation too many. A hat on a hat, so to speak. Then the head is attached to the long spring that will make it pop up. These are Coyote shoe springs subcontracted from Acme. The spring, with its head, is placed inside the suit and the cardboard tube. I'd like to see Jack in the Box and those peanut brittle spring snakes in a battle to the death for most useless toy. The suit is clipped around the clown's neck and the toy is tested to make certain that it works right. Hey, you should sell that automatic jack-in-the-box cranker. Now there's a product. Take my money. Finally, the completed jack-in-the-music box is placed inside a cardboard container, ready to be sold to... They're sold in toy stores for $4 and in Newbury Comics for $60. Shipping containers filled with toys are loaded into railroad cars. And never seen or thought of again. Trucks are loaded too. As are truck drivers. And the toys are sent on their way to hundreds of stores everywhere. Wow, this is back when there were hundreds of stores. From factories come a great many of the things that make life better, easier, and more fun for all of us. The perfect toy to teach kids about capitalism. You perform the same physical labor over and over till your arm hurts and then the same disappointing, horrifying thing happens every time. Keep smiling. Still, make it look natural. That's all I have to say. Thank you for watching. Fun with Shorts is made possible by Patreon and viewers like these. For as little as a dollar per video, you can see early and exclusive shorts. Also, please check out the newly updated funwithshorts.com for the latest video downloads, DVDs, and, at long last, merch! Okay, that's the end. Bye!